it's time for maths with Mr. Thomas. Let's go, chapter nine, lesson number four, the area between a curve and the y-axis. Woo! So we already know how to work out the area between a curve and the x-axis. Say we had to work out this area A between x equals A and x equals B. If we've got our curve y equals f of x, what do we do? Integrate! You are perfectly right, you would integrate so the area equals, well your curve is going to have the equation y equals something, so whatever y is equal to, you integrate that. And if we want the area between x equals a and x equals b, well they would be your limits. Lower one at the bottom, and then the larger one at the top. So we're integrating whatever y is between a and b, and we integrate with respect to x. However, Bum, bum, bum. If we want to work out the area between a curve and the y-axis, what would we do there? Well, we honestly do pretty much the same thing. However, what we have to do is change one little bit. We are still going to be integrating, and we're still integrating between a and b, but we're going to integrate x, because we want the equation to be of the form x equals, and we would have it in terms of y, so we're going to integrate with respect to y. So we're doing the same thing, but we just rearrange the equation slightly, and so instead of integrating whatever y is, we integrate whatever x is. Instead of integrating with respect to x, we integrate with respect to y. So note, to evaluate this definite integral, x must be expressed explicitly in terms of y. So in other words, we need to get x equals before we can sub that in. Let's look at some examples. So example one, calculate the area enclosed between y equals x squared, whoop, the y-axis, and the lines y equals one, and y equals four. So to do this, the first thing we need, because we're integrating the, between the curve and the y-axis, we need to express our equation of the form x equals. We need to write x in terms of y. So we're starting off with y equals x squared, and we need to rearrange that so we get x squared. How would we do that? Kevin, first thing is to... Good, you just take the square root. So we've got the square root of y. Really, you could have the positive or the negative, or could you? Well, no, you would just take the positive because it's an area that we are dealing with. So we've got x equals, that's the square root of y, and now we can use our funky wee formula. The area equals the integral of x with respect to y between a and b. So if we sub that in then, we're going to be integrating between 1 and 4. That was the two lines, we had y equals 1 and y equals 4, and x we worked out to be the square root of y. So we're integrating that with respect to y. If you do that well, y, uh, the square root of y would be y to the power of 1 half. If you add 1 to the power, it goes to y to the power of 3 over 2, and then you would divide by the 3 over 2. Big square brackets, and we're integrating between 1 and 4. From there, well, if you're dividing by a fraction, remember you can turn the fraction upside down and multiply by that. So that would be 2 thirds times, and then we've got the square root of y cubed. From there, you want to sub in these values, 1 and 4, so we're going to have, well, you could take out that 2 thirds, really just keep that outside, and then you've got 4 in place here in place of y, so it's going to be the square root of 4 cubed, take away the square root of 1 cubed. So imagine if you wrote all that out, you could then take the 2 thirds out as a common factor, and it would leave you with that. If you start working that out, well, square root of 4 is 2. If you cube that, you get 8. Square root of 1 is 1. Cube that, you get 1. So it's really 8 take away 1. That would give you 7. Imagine 7 is 7 over 1. To multiply the fractions together then, you'd have 2 times 7, which is 14. So we'd have 14 thirds, which is the same as 4 and 2 thirds. And just remember your units, because it's an area that we're working out, it would be so many squared units. And that there is your answer. Example two, calculate the area enclosed between y equals 8x cubed, whoom, and the y-axis, and the lines y equals 1, and y equals 8. So the first thing, once again, because we're wanting the area between the curve and the y-axis, what would you do, Mediha? Get x equals. Perfect. You would have to express our equation in the form of x equals. High five, Mediha. 
So doing that, we're starting off with y equals 8x cubed. Rearrange that, so divide both sides by 8x cubed would therefore be 1 eighth of y. And then you could easily get x by taking the cube root. So we've got the cube root of 1 eighth y. To work that out, well, take the cube root of 1 eighth. So take the cube root of 1, which is 1. Take the cube root of 8, which is 2. So we'd have a half. And take the cube root of y, which will just be the cube root of y. Or if you write it with an index, it'll be y to the power of 1 third. That is as we've now got x equals and we've got it in terms of y. So we can use do, 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 the formula. Area equals the integral of x, whatever x is equal to, integrate with respect to y, and integrate between a and b. Here the values of a and b will be 1 and 8. So we would end up with this. We're integrating between 1 and 8, and we're integrating x was equal to a half y to the power of 1 third, and integrate with respect to y. If you do that, well, 1 half, I'm just going to leave that as it is. y to the power of 1 third, if you add 1 to that, well, 1 add 3 is 4, so it'd be 4 thirds. So you'd have y to the power of 4 thirds, and then divide by that new power. So divide by the 4 thirds. Again, the half, I'm just leaving. Big square brackets, and we're integrating between 1 and 8. Woo. From there, we'll, you could divide by the fraction by also turning it upside down and multiplying. So if you turn this fraction upside down and multiply, it would be 3 quarters times the half. Simplify the 3 quarters times the half, multiply numerators and denominators, simplify there, and you would end up with 3 eighths. That would give you then 3 eighths y to the power of 4 over 3, and then you're integrating between 1 and 8. If you sub in the values then, well you could take out 3 eighths as a common factor, but that would be 3 eighths times, and then you'd sub in 8 in place of y, so it would be 8 to the power of 4 thirds, and then you'd have 1 to the power of 4 thirds. Just remember, think about flower power. On the bottom you've got the root, so that's going to be the cube root of the 8 if you sub that in, and the power flower is going to be 4. So it would be the cube root of 8 to the power of 4, and the same with the 1, it would be the cube root of 1 to the power of 4. If you start to work that out, well, the cube root of 8 is 2. 2 to the power of 4 is 16. Cube root of 1 is 1. To the power of 4, it will still be 1. 16 take away 1 gives us 15, so it's 15 times this 3 eighths. Treat 15 as 15 over 1, so you're multiplying the two fractions, multiply the numerators and denominators. That will give you 3 times 15, which is 45, over 8 times 1, which is 8, and 45 over 8. Well, you could simplify that down to 5 and 5 eighths. And again, because it's an area you're dealing with, you've got squared units. Yeah! Example 3, calculate the area enclosed between y equals x squared plus 1, as you can see here. Whee! y equals 5. Whee! y equals 2. Whee! And the y-axis. So, first thing, again, you've got y equals. You're wanting to rewrite that in terms of x equals. So, starting off with y equals x squared plus 1, what would you do, kangaroo? Brilliant. Subtract 1 from both sides and then take the square root. So, x would equal the square root of y take away 1. Normally, you'd have plus or minus, but again, because it's an area we are dealing with, you can just use the positive. X is written in terms of y, so if you use the formula, ta-da, you end up with x being the square root of y take away 1, and we'd be integrating that between 2 and 5. And we're integrating with respect to y. So if we do that, this is what we would end up with. We have the integral of the square root of y take away 1 with respect to y, and we're integrating between 2 and 5. To do that, rewrite the square root as the power of 1 half. So we've got y take away 1 to the power of 1 half. The rest stays as it is. After that, if you add 1 to the power, well, 1 add 2 is 3, so it's 3 over 2, and divide by that new power. Remember, when you're dividing by the 3 over 2, it's the same as turning upside down and multiplying. So you're multiplying by 2 thirds. After that, sub in the 5, sub in the 2. So if you do that, you end up with 2 thirds times. 5 take away 1 is 4, so it's 4 to the power of 3 over 2. Take away, sub in the 2 as well, so it's 3 over 2. And no, it's 2 over 3 times the 2 take away 1, which is 1 to the power of 3 over 2. If you start to work that out, well, that's going to give you the square root of 4, which is 2. If you work out that cubed, that will give you 8 
So you've got 8 over 1 times the 2 thirds, 8 times 2 is 16, and it'll be over 1 times 3, which is 3. So it's 16 over 3, which is the same as 5 and 1 third. And we're taking away, well, this here, this 1 to the power of 3 over 2, is just going to stay as 1. Square root of 1 is 1, 1 cubed, still 1. So that becomes 2 over 3. If you have 5 and 1 third, take away 2 thirds, it leaves you with 4 and two thirds. And once again, it's an area we're dealing with, so we have squared units. Wasn't that fun? Working out the area between a curve and the y-axis. Try some of the questions in the Unit 2 booklet, page 61. Best of luck. Have fun. See you. So long. Bye.